This is Travis. He wants to learn about the bucket sort. Hello? Are you excited to enter the fascinating world of the bucket sort algorithm? Not really. Where are you? Travis isn't that bright. First, you need some numbers to sort through. Now, we'll need to get you some buckets. Now is a good time to talk about just how the bucket sort works exactly. To begin, the bucket sort. Choose a number of buckets B, with each bucket having a range of M of N, where N equals the expected or actual maximum value, and N is the number of values in the data set. The data set is then placed into various buckets based on their ver values of its numbers. These buckets are then divided into buckets of smaller range and the values inside are placed into the ever-shrinking range of these buckets. Eventually, every number in the data set will be alone in a bucket or with other values equal to itself. The values are then pulled out of the buckets in the correct order and the sorted data set is returned. You're not going to let me go. Until I finish this, are you? Now you're getting it. Alright, what next then? Next, we'll run an example case. First, the algorithm places the numbers in each of the buckets. Ahem. Oh, right. Excellent! Now these buckets are sorted into smaller buckets. Each of these numbers in the first bucket set are then sorted into these smaller buckets. Now that each of the numbers has its own bucket, they are pulled out in the right order and voila, the data set is sorted. Now I'm sure you're asking yourself, hey, there are a ton of sorting algorithms out there. How does the bucket sort's efficiency compare to that of the other sorting algorithms? I, I wasn't really... Uh, Actually, yeah. the bucket sort has pretty good efficiency. It runs the best case of O of N and average case of O of N and the worst case of O of N squared. Well, but if, if the bucket sort is so fast, why does anyone bother to use any other algorithms? Great question, Travis. The bucket sort is able to run as quickly as it does in scenarios where the user will have a good idea of the range and distribution of the data being worked with. If the user can accurately determine the approximate minimum and maximum and any clustering that may occur in the data set. Buckets can be created so a smaller number of divisions is needed to place each number in its own bucket. For example, SAT scores have a minimum value of zero and a maximum of 2400. 
However, most scores will be nearer to the middle rather than the outer limits. The bucket sort can perform well when dealing with data such as this. The bucket sort runs less efficiently in scenarios where a user doesn't know the range of values or possible distribution. For example, a user mixes M a value of 4 billion, there are only 10 numbers to sort, falling in the range between 0 and 100. This means that many divisions of buckets are needed to sort this cluster data set. Okay, I think I get it. So, the bucket sort works by, you have your buckets, you place values in based on what, what their individual values are, and then you pull them out in the right order. It works pretty well in circumstances where you have a minimum and maximum, and you know a lot about your data, and hopefully it's evenly distributed. But it doesn't work very well whenever you aren't too sure what kind of data you'll be dealing with. That's all there is to it. Thanks for being a good sport, Travis. Happy sorting! Oh, wait, don't, don't go yet. Could you help me with OCHEM?